feel like here people would care just more about having somebody that they love kind of thing rather than money. That it has a quite unique character to it. That Myanmar is quite an untouched country. It's been kind of isolated from the world for many decades under a kind of military government. My name is Ali Drummond, I'm a skateboarder from England and I moved to Myanmar back in 2009. Myanmar is located on the western side of Southeast Asia and it's bordered by quite a few other countries, India, China, Laos, Thailand as well and also Bangladesh. It's a real melting pot of different cultures. Myanmar is made up of dozens and dozens of different ethnic groups with their own traditions, their own cultures and their own languages but they've all been put in this one country called Myanmar as the British, when they came here during colonial times, they just drew a border around it. After many decades of British colonial rule and also Japanese rule in the Second World War, Myanmar got its independence in 1948. But it was short-lived because in 1962, the military government staged a coup and took power. And in fact, they are the same people that have been in power ever since. They're still in power today, but just in a different kind of form. So first impressions were just like, different like it's probably the furthest away from like western culture that i've ever been the skate park which i'm sitting in right now it was over a year or two in the making there was always a need and always a dream of having obviously a, a proper skate park here to service the community and an organization called make life skate life got in contact with me asking about the potential for having a skate park built in Myanmar. there were definitely a couple of hiccups along the way but in the end it was built in a couple of weeks and it's really going to be a place that not only services the current community of skateboarders, but also provides a place for a whole new generation of them as well. The skateboard scene in Myanmar has actually been here for a lot longer than I think people think. One of the skaters who still skates today, who's 36, 37 years old, he started skating back in the mid-90s. And he was saying at the time he was one of the first people to start skateboarding in the country. Because during that time the country was still under a very repressive government and it was closed from the outside world, the Burmese skateboarding community, although it was there, it was very, very small. Uh, a, a handful or two of people. They weren't too aware of the names of the skateboard tricks. So for some of them, they came up with names for themselves. So the one in particular, which is quite interesting, is the word for an ollie. They didn't know what an ollie was called. So they called it for the word in Burmese for a dolphin, as it mimics the way a dolphin jumps out of the water. There's not a lot of street spots in Yangon, but um, the, the streets are kind of smooth, so it's fun just to cruise around skating the streets. Feels a bit like New York.
anywhere those like pagodas or anything that's like a huge symbol of a, of a country is pretty insane. We traveled north to Nepidao. 